the beauty and mystique of the Australian outback, where spaces are wide, people are few, and celebrated Aussie animals roam free. Oh, look at this right here, Jack. This is our first kangaroos, you guys. Wow. Out here, a journey down under reveals an amazing underground world. Look, oh, look right up in here. Right there, look at that, wow. Today, bats flourish in these darkened caverns where vast rivers of lava once flowed under the ancient landscape of Australia's Andara Volcanic National Park, quite a trek from the Bay Area. The first leg is more than 8,000 miles by jet across the Pacific to Cairns on the northeastern shore of Australia. Then it's another 170 miles southwest by car to Andara. The drive begins in rainforest along the coast and continues into ever drier and less populated terrain. All the while we have to remember to stay on the opposite side of the road and make way for oncoming vehicles. It's a long journey worth every single kilometer. This is a classic scene in the Australian outback. Very few people, in fact, from this very spot in a radius of about 20 miles, there are fewer than 200 people. But there is a vast eucalyptus forest, and out there, dozens of ancient volcanoes covering a mysterious kingdom underground. For us North Americans, Andara is mysterious above ground, too. Back home, we don't have these fellows hopping around. Oh, hopping away, look at that, there they go, right through there. And there are two right here in front of us, right here in the foreground. Look at that, the whole family. Oh, gosh. Thomas Atkinson is a guide here at Andara National Park. His ancestors moved into this remote region about a century and a half ago, and his grandmother helped establish the park. Thomas knows his kangaroos. We were able to get surprisingly close without scaring them. Eastern greys have family groups. There'll be one dominant male for that group, and it could be up to, say, 15 in this area, but a group size is about 15, mostly females, one dominant male, a few juvenile males. Thomas says there are roughly 50 million kangaroos in Australia and barely 20 million people. This little Joey is just learning to navigate on his own while sticking close to the security of his mother's pouch. Someday, he'll be as swift as the wind. These guys hop at just over 60 kilometers an hour. They're the right? fastest in Australia. And they're also among the tallest. He'll grow to 180 centimeters tall. 180 centimeters tall, which He'll is about... He'll look you in the eye. You know? Look me in the eye. Probably look down at you a bit, actually. But, uh... <laughs> Eastern greys have lived here for eons and certainly witnessed, 190,000 years ago, rivers of molten lava pouring from the slopes of these low-slung craters down into the earth. Wow, look at this. I mean, this is, this is huge. This is a, like a giant cathedral down here. Red-hot rivers flowed through these underground tubes for decades. And eventually when the eruption stopped, the lava drained away, leaving behind the skin that had formed around the outside. That's what we're standing in right here. So these, these tubes, the big tubes like this one, would go for 100 kilometers. This one's 100 kilometers from the volcano. That's about 62 miles. The longest tube is 100 miles, making it the longest lava flow from a single crater anywhere on the planet. It was a huge eruption. It's the equivalent, I uh, think, to about 10 Hawaiian volcanoes all at once. The walls of the tube are splashed with color, and with the light of our camera turned off, wow, dark. We're plunged into total darkness. It's like scuba diving, but scuba diving in the outback. <laughs> it's a different world underneath. Some of Andara's underworld is teeming with life. With just a, a little bit of a great bottle. smell that I, uh, I'm, I'm picking up in the air down here. That's the bat guano. Bat and guano. Uh, bats themselves are so inside a bit of this a, cave. Uh, yeah, tens of thousands. And these are eastern horseshoe bats, these ones here. They eat insects. The deeper we go in this tube, can't get a full breath, can't get a full breath of air in here. <laughs> the more difficult it becomes to breathe. 
and I'm really struggling for breath in here to talk to you. The bats gather on the ceiling, inhaling oxygen and exhaling heavy carbon dioxide that sinks to the floor of the tube around us like a smothering blanket. So the oxygen's up there. Where the bats are. down here. They got the good air, <laughs> leaving us the bad air. So. The bats fly from the tube to feed on insects as evening falls, and we ascend into a typical outback sunset as the timeless sounds of nature settle in for the night. The sounds of nature also wake us up the next morning. We spent the night comfortably at the Andara Lava Lodge in restored 19th century railway cars. After a solid bush breakfast around the campfire, and farewells to our neighbors in the park, we're off again at the speed of an eastern gray across a wide expanse of a land as large as our own, but far less crowded, where rivers no longer run red, but the sky surely does. Doug McConnell, New Center 4.